Welding 101. We're going to go over how to start up the Miller TIG welder today and all the way through the point of doing a lap weld. We have two different TIG welders here, a Miller which does two processes. It'll do arc welding, which you might be familiar with from the intro class. Um, bleed whip is over here, it's wrapped up right now. And it'll also do the TIG process, tungsten inert gas. So we're going to set it up for that. Right now everything's off. Okay, first thing we're going to do is turn our gas on. And if you're the first person to weld for the day, you're going to turn the tank on at the tank. Make sure it's got pressure here. Looks like it's got way too much line pressure, so I'm going to dial this out. Turn the tank open. And then this is how I get the argon to flow into the system. I'm going to turn this on. And notice my I had dialed this out, so my line pressure dropped down to where it should be, about 20. And actually, it could be even less than that, um, somewhere in the 10 range for... Uh, between 10 to 15 for TIG welding. So I've got tank pressure on, main line uh, valve is turned on. Now the last thing I gotta do is I gotta give this thing gas as well. Um, the top one, if you look at this, that's on right now and in line. So that means it is on. Somebody left it on, this would be off right now because it's opposite of the line. So I'm gonna turn it in line. I got gas flowing down here all the way to my TIG welder. Next thing is to turn this machine on. And it's going to kind of calibrate itself, come up with a couple numbers, and then it's going to reset and ask you what do you want to do, okay? Right now the process is set to TIG. I can toggle back and forth to stick, which is arc welding, or TIG. I want to make sure that I'm on TIG here, that my amperage is remote, which means I'm going to control it with the dial, that my output is remote, and that my start is high frequency. And I can toggle through these, but the high freak start is simply going to mean that when it starts up, it's going to run some high frequency electricity. And you can actually hear the gas flow already, and that's the high frequency buzz right there. It's trying to find its ground right now, so I'm going to shut the dial off. This is post flow, meaning how long the gas will flow. The post flow is set for 18 seconds right now. I can dial that back to like 9 because I'm not welding or anything, obviously. And then I'm just going to check my gas levels. So if I jump back up here, I'm still flowing right now. I can maybe dial this up just a little bit. Okay. I've got a sharpened tungsten tip already. We went over how to prep that. The other side is contaminated, you can see that. So I would need to roll this on the belt sander to get it clear and then sharpen the tip uh, appropriately. Let's go run and do that quick. Just to show you that it only takes 45 seconds. So because there's metal on the sides, I'm going to take the metal off the sides, the contaminated metal. Notice when the sparks change, they get to a real dull red orange. That's the tungsten being ground away. I don't want to take off a lot, lot of diameter. I just want to clear it up. Now I'm going to sharpen the tip. Now you got to be careful. This is against what we know as the rules. But you face the tip into this so that all of your cut marks from sharpening it are vertical. That helps the electricity travel down the tip and into your metal. So, I've got a sharpened tip. Normally I want a sharpened tip when I'm welding mild steel. Loaded into the collet. Collet's loose right now. We want to push it in so we got about the length of the diameter of the material, which is like 5 30 seconds, eighth inch. I usually leave it out a little bit further. But about like that, I'm going to tighten up the collet. I'm good to go. I've already got some metal set up here, but I've got a stool set up so I can be comfortable. Now, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to get my torch like this. I might even throw this over my shoulder or over my arm so that I don't have to hold that weight up. I'm going to get myself in position so that I can weld pretty much vertical my heat is going to be going right into this lap weld and I'm just going to work this back and forth, toggle this back and forth and weld this joint together. I might spot this side, stop, dial this up, spot this side because otherwise I know it's going to warp apart 
But what we're going to ask you to do is just a simple lap weld like this without filler rod to start with, okay? And we're going to try and actually record this right now using a screen um, on the welder so it's going to go dark for a little bit. Okay, ready? Here we go. Cover. What did we forget? Ground. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna slide this over a little bit. Make sure I get good ground. Okay. Let's try it again. Ready? One second. So I'm dialing this up right now, watching for the metal to melt on the base and the top. I know the base is going to take more heat, so I'm keeping it down there right now. I'm still dialing the dial up. Now I've got a little weld puddle forming there, a little bit of molten metal. I'm going to go up to the top and grab. There they just melted together. And now I'm just moving down the line. Moving that tungsten tip back and forth a little bit. There, got to get them to come together. And I'm actually dragging my hand on the cable as a guide. And I'm going to stop right there. So we can take a look at that post flow. And what I'm looking for there is some uniformity. I got real nice uniformity through the second part there. You can see I was waving a little bit. But um, didn't move too much either. I didn't have to spot the other side. If we look at the other side of it, we've got pretty much max heat penetration. And I'm getting away with using the table as kind of a backer because that one piece is on that cold table. So it's not typically going to burn through. But where you see those spots right there, if that was sitting up in midair, it might burn a hole right through and then, you know, we'd have to dial it back or use even less heat. So, um, we'd want you to weld this full through all the way from one side to the other. Of course, just like the lap weld with MIG, you can flip it over and try the other side. Uh, and then we might do something with, uh, with a filler rod as well. Um, when you're done, make sure you wrap up the cords on the welder so they're not on the ground. And as far as shutting the machine down, if anybody else can get these cords so they lay out straight here. Nice. And I'm going to loop them so they're not on the ground because I respect the cords. Be careful. Come on, cords. Don't drop the torch. It's a ceramic tip. It'll break. I'm going to loop up one more time. And then maybe lay this torch head right over the top here. Okay. And I can shut this down off. And I can shut my gas off here. And if I'm done for the day, I can be the nice guy or girl, shut it off at the tank and here. That, is, that's, that means we're not going to lose a tank of argon overnight because of a leak. Okay, scene.